We'll, today we'll talk about how to find the range of composite functions, some complicated composite functions. <clears throat> Whenever we try to find out the range of a composite function, we always have to worry how does the graph of outer function look like. And in this case, the outer function is sine. So, we have to take care of whether the sine is an increasing function, a decreasing function, or neither increasing or neither decreasing function. But if I draw the graph of sine, it looks like a wave. Now, as I can see, if I will look at this graph, I can see the sign from here to here is increasing function, from here to here it is again decreasing, from here to here it is increasing and again it is decreasing. So I came to know that sin x is neither increasing nor decreasing, n i n d, neither increasing nor decreasing. So later on, this concept is going to be too crucial in order to get the range of this function this entire function that is sine of 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now the first step that we need to take care of is we need to find the range of the inner function. So how can I possibly find the range of inner function? So let me assume that inner function is f of x. So it is 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. So as I can see this, this function is a parabola. How I came to know that? Because it has x squared, it has x as well as a constant term in it. So in order to find out the range of this, I need to do two things. First, I need to find the minimum value for this function as well as the maximum value for this function. Now, as I came to know, the quotient in front of x squared for this parabola is positive. So a is greater than zero. So whenever the quotient in front of x squared is positive, we know that the parabola has to shoot upward or the graph of this function is going to be an upward parabola. No matter how the parabola looks like, it's always going to be an upward parabola. Now I'm drawing the sketch uh, I'm drawing the rough sketch here. It does not have to exactly look like this. It can be it can be in any quadrant. But in order to understand the minimum value that I can find for this parabola is going to be at the vertex because it is an upward parabola. So somehow if I will be able to find the y value at the vertex, so I will be able to find the minimum value for this parabola. So one thing that I know about this parabola that is the minimum value at this point is going to be is going to be at the vertex. So how can I possibly find the minimum value? So I know that at the vertex the derivative is equal to zero. So what can I do for this function? I can set derivative equal to zero. And at that point I will find the x value. And plugging that x value into the original function, so I will be able to find the minimum value for the parabola. So what I'm talking about is this. So I have f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. So I'm going to take the derivative of it. So I'm going to do f prime of x. So derivative of 3x squared is 6x plus 4x is 4 and derivative of a constant is 0 and I'm going to set this derivative equal to 0. Why? Because I'm finding the slope at the vertex. So what I'm going to do after, I'm going to find the value of x. So solving for x here, I'm going to get 6x equal to minus 4 or x is equal to minus 2 by 3. Now, now this is the x value of the vertex. So I found the x value of the vertex, or in other words, this x value is the x value where the slope of the parabola is equal to zero. So if I plug this x value into the original equation, I'm going to get that y value where the slope of the parabola is equal to zero. Or in other words, I will be able to find the minimum value for this parabola. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this value into the original equation. So it's going to be f of minus 2 by 3. So it's going to be 3 plugging minus 2 by 3 in place of x. Is going to be minus 2 by 3 square plus 4 into plugging minus 2 by 3 into x as well so last I have 5 so one thing that I need to take here here is I never need to plug this x in the derivative equation because if I do that this is going to be wrong the x value that I found here should always be plugged into the original equation because that is going to give me the minimum value while the slope is equal to 0 so solving this is going to be 3, 2 square is 4, and I'm going to get 9 here, plus minus 8, so sorry, it's going to be minus 8 by 3, and I'm left with plus 5. Okay, so doing some cancellation, 3, so I'm left with 4 by 3, minus 8 by 3, okay, multiplying it with 3, so it's going to be 15 by 3, so that I will get the denominator equal in all three cases. Then solving for it. In numerator, I'm left with 4 minus 8 plus 15 
divided by 3 and solving it 4 plus 15 is 19, 19 minus 8 is 11, so I am left with 11 to 3. Now this 11 by 3 is the minimal value for the parabola or in other words, it is the value of the vertex. So this is the minimum value for the parabola. What is going to be the maximum value? Okay, the parabola is going to shoot toward infinity. So it's going to approach toward infinity. So minimum value is 11 by 3. So it's not going to exactly look like this. 11 by 3 is in first quadrant. It's going to be somewhere here. We got a negative x as well as a positive y. So it's going to be in the second quadrant. So the graph will look some, something like this. Because the vertex of the parabola has negative x and positive y. So negative x lies here, positive y lies here. So the vertex of the parabola is going to be in the second quadrant. But I don't need to worry about that. I just need to worry what is the minimum value of the parabola. The minimum value of the parabola is 11 by 3. And where will the parabola go? It will shoot toward infinity. So if I talk about the range of inner function, the range of inner function will be 11 by 3, I am including 11 by 3 because 11 by 3 is the value of the vertex, comma, infinity. I was able to find the range of the inner function and the range of the inner function, 6 square plus 4x plus 5, came out to be 11 by 3 to infinity. Now I need to worry how does the graph of outer function looks like. In this case, the outer function sine of x is neither increasing, neither decreasing. Now if the outer function is neither increasing, neither decreasing, I need to worry about where these two values are going to be. I mean, I need to see where 11 by 3 is going to be in the sine graph. So 11 by 3 is bit more than 3.14 or bit more than pi. So it's going to be here. So it's going to be lesser than 4, right? So 11 by 3, okay? Now from 11 by 3 to infinity, I need to sketch the graph of sine. So I'm going to sketch it or color it. Then I'm going to see from 11 by 3 to infinity, I should see what is going to be the minimum and maximum value for the sign. And I can probably see that the minimum value is going to be minus 1 and the maximum value is going to be 1. If it is like that, I, I'm going to say the graph of entire function or the range of entire function, sorry, the range of entire function is going to be from minus 1 to 1. So the range of sine of 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 is from minus 1 to 1. You might think, wait a minute, why we did, why we did all kind of this work? We simply would have found, found the range of the outer function, that's sine of x. Because later on, when we found the range of this entire function, the range came out to be minus 1 to 1. And the range of the sine x itself is from minus 1 to 1. But it is not that way. It does not mean does it mean that whatever the range of the outer function is, that is going to be the range of the entire composite function? I might say no. How? See this example. If I have a function, uh, sine of x, sine of, suppose I have another composite function, sine of pi square by 16 minus x square. Now, if you are familiar with this kind of graph, square root of pi square 16 minus x square, I'm going to set it equal to y for a second. So it's it is pi square by 16 minus x square. Squaring both sides, its y square is equal to pi square by 16 minus x square. Bringing x on this side, so it's going to be y square plus x square is equal to pi by 4 the whole square. So, I came to realize the inner function that is in this case is going to be a circle. But wait a minute, it is not an entire circle. It is a semicircle because it's only going to be defined for the positive y values as I can see from the square root because square root can only take positive values or give me positive values. So in this case, if I try to draw the graph of this function that is a semicircle, it will look something like this. Why like this? Because y is only going to be defined for the positive values. So it has to be in the first and the second quadrant. From this part, this part of the graph is not going to be defined for this. Okay, now as I came to know the graph of this function looks like this. Now I need to worry how does the range of this function looks like. Now I can see that the it looks like a semicircle. The inner function is a semicircle whose origin is at the center and it shoots toward pi by 4 because the radius of this circle semicircle is pi by 4. So the range of the inner function that is 
square root of 5 square by 16 minus x square is 0 minimum value here, here as well, and the maximum value is 5 by 4. So it's going to be 0 including 5 by 4 as well. So I found the range of the inner function that is from 0 to 5 by 4. Now what I need to do, again I know the outer function is neither increasing neither decreasing. It looks like this. Now see, from 0 to pi by 4, I need to look how does the graph of sine look like. Now I can see from 0 here to pi by 4, somewhere here, pi by 4 is 45 degrees. So here at 0, I can see from 0 to pi by 4, the graph of the sine is increasing. It is now not neither increasing neither decreasing because the domain has been restricted for the sine function because the range of the inner function was 0 to pi by 4. Now, I came to know that from 0 to pi by 4, the sine is an increasing function. And whenever we have an increasing function, okay, we directly need to plug in the values of the inner function into the outer function if the outer function is an increasing function. So what I need to do, I simply need to do this. I need to write sine of 0, comma, sine of pi by 4. Why I plug in the value directly? Because I came to realize the outer function from the restricted domain, from 0 to pi by 4, is an increasing function that's why I plug the values into the sine directly so sine of 0 is 0 sine of pi by is 1 by root 2 now you can see that in previous example while the sine was sitting as an outside function and we came to realize later on that range was minus 1 to 1 but see in this case the range of the function is only 0 to 1 by root 2 and again the sine is sitting as an outside function it does not mean if the sine, sine is an outside function for the composite function I meant to say, it does not mean the range has always to be minus 1 to 1. It can be like this as well, as I illustrated you in this example.